Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Artifacts YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this stock market chart in Adobe Photoshop and Adobe After Effects. Um, to create the grid on the bottom, you will need the plugin trap code form. Everything else though is completed just using Photoshop and Adobe After Effects. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and let's jump right in and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create the 3D candlesticks in Photoshop. So we're going to open up Photoshop first. And this is actually really simple to create. We're just going to be using the shape tool as well as the 3D effect in Adobe Photoshop. And you can just use any example of a stock market graph depending on how you want your graph to look, if you want it to be going up or down. Um, but I'm just going to show you the basics on how to get started on creating the graph. So I'm just going to do a 20 by 16 inch composition and then we are going to be using a transparent background because when we export this as a PNG we want to have a transparent background when we bring it into Adobe After Effects. So the first thing we're going to use is the rectangle tool. If you don't see the shape tool directly located on your tools panel you can go down here to more tools or um, you can simply search for the shapes tool. So I'm going to be selecting the rectangle shape to create the candlesticks. Um, we're also going to be using the line tool a little bit later on, but first we're going to use the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to select a red color. And now I'm just going to click in the composition and begin uh, drawing my candlesticks. So I'm just doing one at a time. And you can check out a stock market chart to see um, the candlesticks vary in size. And I'm just going to create an upward motion of the uh, chart for this tutorial. So once I'm finished drawing out my rectangles for the red candlesticks, I'm going to merge all of my layers. So as you can see, every time I create a new rectangle that creates a new layer in my layers panel. So I'm going to command select all of my red candlesticks and then I'm going to right click and select merge shapes and I'm just going to rename this red candlestick and now I'm ready to create my green candlesticks and I'm going to show you a little bit later how you can change the colors so right now I'm just using the standard red and green and I'm just going to draw out my green candlesticks now along the graph and then once I'm finished drawing out my green candlesticks I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing with the green candlesticks I'm going to merge all these shapes once I'm finished. So to merge the shapes, I'm just going to command select all of my green candlesticks and then I'm going to right click and select merge shapes and then I'm just going to rename this green candlestick. So now we're ready to add our line shape. So the line shape is located under our shape tool and I'm basically just going to be drawing out the lines <clears throat> behind the candlesticks. So you want to make sure that your line layer is below the candlestick layers. And I'm just going to quickly draw out the lines of the candlestick. Now before I continue on, I need to adjust some line settings. So I want to choose a solid line and then I want my line to be approximately four pixel thickness. So now that we have that in place, we can continue drawing our lines. So now when I continue to draw my lines to complete my graph, my settings will already be in place so I don't have to go back and change the setting of each line as I continue to draw them out in the composition. So after I'm done drawing out all my lines, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the green and red rectangle layers. I'm gonna merge all of my lines together so we are left with three layers. We're gonna have the green candlestick layer, the red candlestick layer, and then we're gonna have our lines layer. And I'm gonna merge my line shapes the same way I merged the rectangle shapes. I'm simply going to command and select all of my lines and then can right click and select merge shapes. So once I'm done merging my lines layers, I'm going to rename it lines and then we're going to jump over to our rectangle layers and we're going to create a 3D layer with our rectangle layers. So with the red rectangle layer selected, I'm going to select 3D and then new 3D extrusion from selected layer and that's going to turn the layer into a 3D layer. And now you can see it turns the layer into a 3D layer and then on the right hand side you can see we have our properties panel and we need to readjust the extrusion depth. So we're just going to bring the extrusion depth down to about 0.4. I'm going to set the depth somewhere between 0.2 and 0.4 because I just want a little bit of depth. I don't want it to be too exaggerated. Um, but you can play around with the settings to get the look that you want. 
And then we're going to do the same thing for the green candlestick layer. So once you turn it into a 3D layer, it's going to take you under the 3D settings and that'll um, bring up the extrusion depth options. And then you can see on the top you have your 3D panel, so I can um, use the orbit tool just to rotate this slightly. And then what I'm going to do is export this as a PNG file. It does need to be a PNG file so that when you import it into Adobe After Effects, the background will remain transparent and you're only importing the, the graph that we created. I'm just going to go to File, and then go under Export, and then Export as a PNG, and then just rename this to whatever you want. And then once your PNG file is saved, we are done in Adobe Photoshop, and we're going to jump into Adobe After Effects. So just make sure you save everything, and go ahead and close out Adobe Photoshop, and open up Adobe After Effects. So now we're in Adobe After Effects and we're ready to create our new project. So go ahead and select new composition. And I'm just gonna rename this stock market image and I'm going to be selecting the standard 1920 by 1080 and we're gonna be setting it at one frame uh, because we're just gonna be exporting this as an image and there's not gonna be any animation to this. So this is just going to be a stock image. So we're ready to create a new layer, go to layer new solid and just make sure the settings are 1920 by 1080 square pixels and I'm going to change the background to a black color and click OK. Now we're going to go to effect, generate gradient ramp and I'm just going to change the bottom color to a black and the top color to a dark blue for right now. We can always change these colors later. The next step is to create another solid layer. So layer new solid, this is going to be our grid which you will need trap code form. So just go to effect, trap code form. And we're going to go under the designer tab for trap code form and we're going to be selecting the grid. So this is going to be located under presets, multiple form presets. So you have the option of single form presets and multiple form. We're going to select multiple form presets under grids. And I'm just going to select this flowing grid. And for now I'm going to leave the settings at the same and go ahead and click apply. And as you can see, it creates this really cool grid that I'm just going to reposition to the lower portion of the composition. So using the selection tool, I'm just dragging the point down to the lower half of the composition so that it gives it more of a 3D appearance. And now we're ready to drag in our 3D candlestick. So I'm simply dragging the image that we exported from Photoshop into the After Effects composition. And now I need to resize this. So using the selection tool, I'm just selecting one of the corners and repositioning the candlestick. That's what's great about using the PNG file with the transparent background. You can really position this wherever you want in the composition. So I'm just going to move it back a little bit by selecting the center point. And next we're going to go to our background layer and we're going to add a light effect. So go to let light generate and we're going to select select CC light sweep. So the reason I'm adding the CC light sweep is to highlight the shadows of the candlestick. So I'm just using the rotate tool under the light sweep effect and the selection tool to reposition this. So just pulling the point down to highlight the candlestick shadows. And we're going to change the color in a little bit. I think I want to change the color of the candlestick. So I'm going to go to my candlestick layer and we're going to be adding a hue and saturation, which you can find under effects and presets. So I'm just going to type in hue and saturation and just drag that effect into the candlestick layer. And as you can see, when I rotate this, it's going to change the colors of my candlestick. And I'm just going to change this to a color that I think will look better in the composition. So after I've changed it to the color that I want using hue and saturation, I'm going to go back to my background layer and I'm going to change the color of the light beam. So you just go under light color under the light sweep settings 
and I'm going to be using the eyedropper tool to get a color that is similar to the candlestick color. So the great thing about the eyedropper tool is you can use colors that you're already using in your composition. So that's what I'm gonna be doing is using the pink color for my light sweep. And now I'm just gonna adjust some of the settings under the light sweep. So I'm gonna bring the width up to 65, the sweep intensity up to 30. And then I'm gonna try a couple settings on the edge thickness. I think I'm gonna leave this at four. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is go under my candlestick layer and I'm just gonna bring the opacity down to 95. And now we have one more step. I'm gonna create one more solid layer. So go to layer new solid. I'm gonna create some stars in the background and I'm going to use uh, that pink color again. And just click okay. And then under effects and presets, we're gonna be using CC ball action. So just type in CC ball action drag that into the layer that we just created and now we're going to change some of the settings so under scatter we're going to bring this up to 1024 grid spacing we're going to bring down to two and then ball size can be between 12 and 15 uh, depending on how how visible you want your stars in the background and then if you want to change the color settings of your grid go back to the grid layer and then under the form settings, you want to go under particle. And as you can see right now, it's set just to a solid color blue, but you can choose over X if you want more of a gradient appearance and then go under color over and just hit the blue color and that'll give it more of a gradient effect. And then if you want to give it even more of a 3D appearance, you can go to layer new and add a camera. So just go to layer new camera and just select the preset 35 millimeter and then i'm just going to go back to my grid and just reposition this using the selection tool and that's it the last thing we need to do is render our footage so just go to the render queue and under project you can drag your composition into the render queue or you can go to file export add to render queue and then under output module we're going to be exporting this as a jpeg file so under format you want to select uh, jpeg sequence and then just click ok and then select render and that's it for this tutorial thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more quick tips and tutorials